Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I was actually going to just give you this information in a post. Wasn't going to make a video out of it, but these mushrooms turned out so awesome that I'm going to go ahead and just make a short video out of it. Uh, I'm talking about our maitake, our indoor maitake grow we did. And this is the Dancing Hens Grafola Frondosa strain from Mycelium Emporium. And I grew these on straight pasteurized fuel pellets using my in-bag pasteurization method that I always use. I didn't use any supplementation. I just spawned a little heavy. I went with one pound of wheat spawn per block for a uh, six pound total block. And these things just turned out awesome. I was actually just gone for a couple days. And when I left, the mushrooms were fruiting in the chamber, but they were just starting to expand above the plastic where I'd cut the cut the top of the plastic grow bag off and so I wasn't expecting what I came home to today and uh, check these things out I'll just show you <clears throat> this block is the furthest along probably ready to pick I could probably let it go another day or so but I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one and we'll see what kind of yield we got out of it uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out, especially for no supplementation. This is just straight pasteurized hardwood fuel pellets. And the other thing is uh, the temperatures in my basement right now aren't really optimum for my Taki. I've been up around 70, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and these things still fruited beautifully in our simple tabletop humidity chamber. So I'm gonna take you down the mushroom lab. I'll show you the other bag. It's not quite as far along as this one. It probably needs a couple more days, but it's looking really good too. And then we'll pick this one off and see what kind of yield we got. But just really happy with how this turned out. I started it from a liquid culture syringe right onto wheat spawn to pasteurize fuel pellets. And we got these beautiful maitake mushrooms with temperatures that were actually, like I mentioned, a little too warm, up around 70, 72 Fahrenheit. These things like it around like 65, maybe even a little lower, 60 to 65. So the fact that these did so beautifully, and like I said, they were just clearing the plastic a couple days ago, and they just totally blew up over these last couple of days in the humidity chamber. So let's go down in the mushroom lab and we'll check out the other bag. That is bag number one, and this is bag number two. This one is maybe a day or two behind. Looking good too though, so I will be putting this back in the fruiting chamber and probably picking it in a couple days. This one I'm gonna pick now, and we'll check the weight on it, see what kind of yield we got. So what did we learn? Uh, I started these in the late spring, and at that point it was probably 65 degrees or so down here. And they took about two months to fully colonize before I started to see any primordia formation. So they are slow to grow. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous videos, when I started to see primordia formation, I just clipped the very, just the corners out of the top of the bag just to give them a little extra airflow. But I did not put them in the fruiting chamber. They just sat in open air down here in the basement with the corners clipped off. And I left them in there until they started to grow up the bag a little ways. And as soon as I started to see little fingers or fronds forming on the primordia as they were climbing up the bag, that's when I went ahead and cut the top of the bag off and moved them into the fruiting chamber. So these were just sitting in our very basic tabletop humidity chamber. I've showed you guys this a bunch of times. It's basically just a cheap shelving unit, a 50 gallon clear garbage bag, and a visible mist humidifier or ultrasonic humidifier. And it basically runs itself. I do have to, you have to dial in the humidity. Now we're in the summer here, so it's a little more humid in the basement. So I'm only running it at about quarter power. Sometimes in the winter, I have it up to as high as half power just to maintain humidity. And I have slits down three sides of the bag and that's our fresh air exchange. So just it's just getting fresh air exchange from the room around it. I don't have any other fans blowing fresh air into this humidity chamber other than the small fan that's on the ultrasonic that pushes the ultrasonic mist into the chamber. Super simple setup, very customizable. 
I have it on a tabletop. It doesn't have to be. Uh, you could put it anywhere. And I just like it. it's a little more manageable that it's up a little higher off the ground. But uh, it grows beautiful lion's mane, oysters, everything. So I've showed you this setup a bunch of times. And uh, I know you guys are probably getting tired of me talking about it. But it really does grow beautiful mushrooms. This is the first time I've tried it with my Taki. Because this is my first time growing my Taki. So I'm very impressed. Let's pick these off. I'll also mention the lighting. Um, I just have two 6500K fluorescents. I have one bank above that table, one bank above this table. And right now, you know, I just have the fruiting chamber set up over there. And I'm running them 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So really simple setup, beautiful mushrooms. So that's always a good uh, combination. So I'm going to grab the scale. We'll pick these off. Also with temperature, as I mentioned, when I first inoculated these bags, it was around 65 down here. It gradually warmed up. I'm probably at the warmest part of the year right now. You can see I always have this uh, temperature humidity gauge going down here for ambient and we're at between 70 and 72 Fahrenheit. So as I mentioned, that's kind of out of the range for what my Taki really like, but this strain still performed beautifully. I have never picked my Taki off a of sawdust block before, so I'm just going to start kind of ripping at these clusters, see if I can break them off somewhat cleanly and hit me up in comments and let me know if I'm doing this totally the wrong way but I have very little experience with maitake. I mean, I have a lot of experience with wild maitake, but not sawdust block maitake. So let's see how we do here. We got our scale zeroed. That's beautiful stuff. One cool thing about growing maitake indoors too is that when you, when you pick them in the wild, which I pick a lot in the wild actually, uh, they're always like full of bugs debris um it's kind of tedious sometimes to uh wash them and get them clean but uh these indoor ones are beautiful and we're getting some good weight here guys and this is a six pound block no supplementation just uh kind of a heavy spawn to sub ratio i always go with a pound of grain spawn usually when i do these unsupplemented pasteurized fuel pellet blocks and it's going to be probably our last cluster right there and there we go i could probably nah i got that pretty clean actually it was pretty good might be able to get a couple other little chunks off there but that's not bad so i'd say you can just rip them off don't have to bust a knife out unless you really want to but we have one pound over one pound three ounces of fresh mushrooms fresh maitake and that is some beautiful stuff i have a uh, recipe that i love to do with these things it's actually uh, you cook them in like a herb wine marinade and then you actually put them in a jar and sort of i guess pickle can them in extra virgin olive oil with some black peppercorns and it just turns out awesome so that's probably what i'm going to be doing with these I'm not sure if i'll make a video on that just because our kitchen is totally tore apart right now we're actually getting it redone so i'm hoping when we get rid of like the old powder blue 70s kitchen i can start doing some more uh, cooking videos too and so i'm definitely going to grow more of these guys i am you know, sometimes the mushroom gods give it and sometimes they take it the way. And that's just part of this hobby. But uh, I wasn't expecting much out of this grow. And these things are awesome. So I will definitely be doing this again. So big thanks to uh, Lenny at Mycelium Emporium for bringing us this awesome strain. This is the, uh, again, this commercial Dancing Hens Graffola Frondosa strain. And off an of unsupplemented pasteurized block, we got one pound, three ounces, first flush. So pretty cool. So I will catch you guys next video. Hit me up in comments as always. Let me know what you think and I'll see you there.